Good morning. Welcome to my 14 day unchallenge called Yoga Small Plates, uh, which and the idea is to give you some little bits of information that can be helpful for easing exhaustion over the next uh, two weeks. So today is day three. Um, I did, I spent some time the first couple of days doing some breathing. We did some kidney breathing yesterday and we did, and I'm going to build on that a little bit today. We did, um, structural breath. I'm sorry. We did structural breath yesterday, the day before we did some kidney breathing. And I want to build on the kidney breath today with some practices that I learned from, um, some of my Chinese medicine teachers many years ago, more years ago than I'd like to, it's almost 30 years now, actually. Um, and these are, these are called the healing sounds. So today we're going to do the kidney healing sound. Um, but before we start, just real short, I was, um, scrolling through Facebook yesterday. Not that I ever scroll through Facebook, but <laughs> I had a little time I was waiting for my son and, um, looking through some of the, the videos. And one of the things that I've seen, and <clears throat> this has really been common for several years in um in social media is this idea of you know you can do a handstand or you can do this hard posture and we're gonna i'm gonna help you i'm gonna you know uh defeat this idea that that it's impossible and help you do it and uh so i was just reflecting on that how that's very common in the yoga world how the idea is that you'll gain self-confidence by being able to do a certain posture it'll make you feel like you've achieved something and I think there's something to be said for that. I think a lot of people need those feelings of little victories in their lives. Um, so, so, but what is that, you know, what's underlying that desire and what's the problem with that also, because there is a problem with it. Um, I call it the Stephen Hawking problem, which is that, you know, Stephen Hawking is like brilliant mind obviously many you know has has a tremendous capacity to expand his mind to the corners of the universe and be able to understand things but stephen hawking will never be able to do a handstand or would wouldn't have when he was alive and you know so so i think that there's something really fundamentally flawed with the argument uh and the yogis would say you know this is from yoga theory uh, that there's something fundamentally flawed with the argument that the mastery of this physical structure is a key goal in our lives. It doesn't mean that small uh, goals or small accomplishments aren't something that can make us feel better. Of course, they're, they're confidence building and, you know, doing something great with your body feels good. There's nothing, you know, nothing wrong with that. But the fundamental idea that's flawed underneath it is, what we used to talk about all the time when I worked in hospice, which is that life is a terminal condition. You know, there's, there is no escaping that. And the physical body necessarily, inevitably breaks down. So that means <clears throat> if we put all our eggs into that basket, if we put all of our um, thoughts and hopes and aspirations into the basket of let me develop this physical capacity that what we're doing is uh, taking away our the assets we could be developing in the psycho spiritual realm what are those assets those are things like gratitude compassion kindness non-harming um, uh, valuing and leveraging and exploring my spirituality one of my teachers from India said, there is no progress to be made except in the, sp the sphere of the spiritual. Wow. That's a huge statement, you know, I'm not sure entirely by it, but wow, that's a really interesting statement, isn't it? Because we don't think like that. We think I can make progress in my career. I can make progress uh, financially. I can make progress physically. I can make progress in terms of relationships. All of those things, but essentially what he was saying is all of those things are temporary gains. And they're also potentially can be washed out at any moment. You know, there's this great story, so many stories from the, uh, uh, from the tradition about Vishnu and, and Narada. And um, they're walking down a path and Vishnu says, can you go and get um, me some water, Narada? And he's like, sure. So he goes over to this well to get some water. And while he's at the well, 
he um, meets a, a woman and they start talking. She gives him some water. She says, well, why don't you come back and have dinner with my family? They have dinner with the family. They get along really well. They um, decide, he decides to stay over for the night. And the next day he's completely involved in the family life and he's helping her father out in the field and, and they're getting along really great. And after a few weeks, he's like, I really like your daughter. And the father's like, great, we love you. Let's get, you know, let's get you married. They get married <clears throat> and they start having kids and, and, uh, you know, they, they get grow together. They have a, uh, they have a house. Suddenly a huge flood comes and the flood starts taking away everything, the houses, the animals, the farm, his family. And the only thing left to Bernard is he's holding a cup and, uh, and he's clinging to a tree. And he, when he wakes up in the morning and the sun is out and the floods are gone, everything is gone. The only thing he has is his cup with water in it. And there's Vishnu and Vishnu says, Oh, thank you for bringing me some water. <laughs> the idea, of course, of the story is that anything in our life can be washed away at any moment. And facing that reality, it requires a tremendous sense of spiritual courage and strength and um, conviction and faith. And those are things that tend to get, uh, they tend to get minimized in our culture in favor of, hey, I'll show you how to do a handstand. Do, so do you see what I'm saying here? That, that there's, there's incredibly important life lessons that we could access via the tradition. And um, I think that we could do better with that as a yoga community. I think we could do better with that. We can help people better to leverage those spiritual strengths to become more resilient and to be able to handle um, <clears throat> life's up and downs as they get thrown at us, as they inevitably will. I'm sorry if that sounds like a bummer. All I really wanted to do was talk about kidney practice today, but I do think these kinds of lessons are also really important. So um, <laughs> going back to kidney exhaustion, let me show you how to do this practice. You sit up on your knees and it might actually help if I sit sideways so that you can see. So, and what, you're, what you wanna do, practice for helping to nourish exhaustion, you wanna have this focus here in the kidney area, lower back, and you're going to breathe in and as you exhale, you're going to kind of let the lower back area just gently puff out behind you. You could do this with your hands on your back if you like. Breathing in and exhaling. Right, so it's just a gentle, it's almost like a, it's not anywhere near as extreme as cat-cow, but it's almost like a verticality on the inhale and then a gentle. Now, here's all the visualization stuff that goes with it and the sound. The healing sound for the kidneys is like you're blowing out a candle, right? So the hands come here and on the exhale, they kind of reach forward and you blow out the candle. And at the same time, you imagine kind of expanding the energy in your back, inhale and blow out the candle. Let's do one more. Good. Now you can keep going while I talk. Now the next piece of this is to visualize a beautiful midnight blue color. And I like to visualize like the midnight blue sky full of stars um, and, and let that color kind of flood into this area of your body. And you're welcome to do that while you keep the breathing going on. So you're bringing that beautiful blue color, midnight blue, it's kind of the color of my shirt actually, into the kidney area. And that's a nourishing color for the kidneys. And then the next piece is just to be still and to meditate. And in this meditation, <clears throat> you can think about uh, fear because fear is the dominant um, dysfunctional emotion of the kidneys. Now, I don't want to say dysfunctional because often fear is very functional, but when it's, when you're over, when fear overrides the emotional um, system, then, then we know it's dysfunctional. So the feeling of being fearful, we want to hold that for a moment. And then we do what Patanjali says, Pratipaksha Bhavanam, which means to flip around that, um, that emotion. And so the opposite of fear 
is courage. So as you're um, seated here and noticing your breath in midnight blue, beautiful color, you bring in as if you're spiraling from the uh, universe into your body and into the kidney areas, a feeling of strength and courage, that kind of warrior feeling. And then there's one more piece to the meditation, <clears throat> which is to actually put a smile on your face and let the, that smiling energy of gratitude come into the organ. So you bring feelings of gratitude into your kidney. Thanking the kidneys for all the work that they do, providing energy and of course filtering um, uh, the fluids in your system, letting the uh, urine come out of your system. So de de detoxifying effect, the energizing effect the effect of building Agni as well as Prana, so building the energy in the system. And that's the practice. So I hope you enjoyed that. Please leave a question or a comment just so I know that you're here. Because sometimes I'm like, I'm just talking to empty space. I don't know. Um, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. We'll be on day four tomorrow. And I think I have some asanas planned, but I can't remember. We'll see. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for being here. And um, see you tomorrow. Bye.